The Puebloans, or Pueblo peoples, are Native Americans in the southwestern United States who share common agricultural, material, and religious practices. Among the currently inhabited Pueblos, Taos, San Ildefonso, Acoma, Zuni, and Hopi are some of the most commonly known. Pueblo people speak languages from four different language families, and each Pueblo is further divided culturally by kinship systems and agricultural practices, although all cultivate varieties of maize. Pueblo peoples have lived in the American Southwest for millennia and descend from the ancestral Puebloans. The term Anasazi is sometimes used to refer to ancestral Pueblo people, but it is now largely avoided. Anasazi is a Navajo word that means ancient ones or ancient enemy, hence Pueblo people is rejection of it, see exonym. Pueblo is a Spanish term for village. When Spanish colonization of the Americas began in the 16th century with the founding of Nuevo Mexico, they came across complex multi-story villages built of adobe, stone, and other local materials. New Mexico contains the largest number of federally recognized Pueblo communities. Though some Pueblo communities also live in Arizona and Texas, mostly in the Sangre de Cristo Mountains and along the Rio Grande and Colorado Rivers and their tributaries. Pueblo nations have maintained much of their traditional cultures, which center around agricultural practices, a tight-knit community revolving around family clans and respect for tradition. Puebloans have been remarkably adept at preserving their culture and core religious beliefs, including developing syncretic Pueblo Christianity. Exact numbers of Pueblo peoples are unknown, but in the 21st century, some 75,000 Pueblo people live predominantly in New Mexico and Arizona, but also in Texas and elsewhere. Puebloan societies contain elements of three major cultures that dominated the Southwest United States region before European contact, the Mogollon culture, whose adherents occupied an area near Gila Wilderness, the Hohokam culture, and the ancestral Pueblo culture, who occupied the Chaco Canyon and Mesa Verde regions of the Four Corners area. Archaeological evidence suggests that people partaking in the Mogollon culture, Mogajoun, were initially foragers who augmented their subsistence through the development of farming. Around the first millennium, CE farming became the main means to obtain food. Water control features are common among Membres branch sites, which date from the 10th through 12th centuries CE. The nature and density of Mogollon residential villages changed through time. The earliest Mogollon villages were small hamlets composed of several pite houses, houses excavated into the ground surface, with a stick and thatch roofs supported by a network of posts and beams and faced on the exterior with earth. Village sizes increased over time and, by the 11th century, villages composed of ground-level dwellings made with a rock and earth walls, with roofs supported by post and beam networks, became common. Cliff dwellings became common during the 13th and 14th centuries. Hohokam is a term borrowed from the Oodham language, used to define an archaeological culture that relied on irrigation canals to water their crops since as early as the 9th century CE. Their irrigation system techniques allowed for its adherents to expand into the largest population in the Southwest by 1300. Archaeologists working at a major archaeological dig in the 1990s in the Tucson Basin along the Santa Cruz River, identified a culture and people that were ancestors of the Hohokam, who might have occupied southern Arizona as early as 2000 BCE. This prehistoric group from the early agricultural period grew corn, lived year-round in sedentary villages, and developed sophisticated irrigation canals from the beginning of the Common Era to about the middle of the 15th century. Within a larger context, the Hohokam Culture Area inhabited a central trade position between the Patayan, situated along with the lower Colorado River and in Southern California. The Trincheras of Sonora, Mexico, the Mogollon culture in Eastern Arizona, Southwest New Mexico, and Northwest Chihuahua, Mexico, and the ancestral Puebloans in Northern Arizona, Northern New Mexico, Southwest Colorado, and Southern Utah. The ancestral Puebloan culture is known for the stone and earth dwellings its people built along cliff walls, particularly during the Pueblo II and Pueblo III eras, from about 900 to 1350 CE in total. 
The best preserved examples of the stone dwellings are now protected within United States national parks, such as Navajo National Monument, Chaco Culture National Historical Park, Mesa Verde National Park, Canyons of the Ancients National Monument, Aztec Ruins National Monument, Bandelier National Monument, Hovenweep National Monument, and Canyon de Chali National Monument. These villages were accessible only by rope or through rock climbing. However, the first ancestral Puebloan homes and villages were based on the pit house, a common feature in the basket maker periods. Villages consisted of apartment-like complexes and structures made from stone, adobe mud, and other local materials, or were carved into the sides of canyon walls. Design details from ancestral Puebloan villages contain elements from cultures as far away as present-day Mexico. In their day, these ancient towns and cities were usually multi-storied and multi-purpose buildings surrounding open plazas and view sheds. They were occupied by hundreds to thousands of ancestral Pueblo peoples. These population complexes hosted cultural and civic events and infrastructure that supported a vast outlying region, hundreds of miles away linked by transportation roadways. By about 700 to 900 CE, the Puebloans began to move away from ancient pit houses dug in cliffs and to construct connected rectangular rooms arranged in apartment-like structures made of adobe and adapted to sites. By 1050, they had developed planned villages composed of large terrace buildings, each with many rooms. These apartment house villages were often constructed on defensive sites, on ledges of massive rock, on flat summits, or on steep-sided mesas, locations that would afford the Puebloans protection from raiding parties originating from the north, such as the Comanche and Navajo. The largest of these villages, Pueblo Bonito in Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, contained around 700 rooms in five stories. It may have housed as many as 1,000 persons. Pueblo buildings are constructed as complex apartments with numerous rooms, often built in strategic defensive positions. The most highly developed were large villages or pueblos situated at the very top of the mesas, the rocky tablelands typical to the southwest. Before 1598, Spanish exploration of the present-day Pueblo areas was limited to several transitory groups. A group of colonizers led by Juan de Onate arrived at the end of the 16th century as part of an apostolic mission to convert the natives. Despite initial peaceful contact, Spain's attempts to dispose of the Pueblo religion and replace it with Catholicism became increasingly more aggressive and were met with great resistance by Pueblans whose governmental structure was based around the figure of the cacique, a theocratic leader for both material and spiritual matters. Over the years, Spaniards' methods grew harsher, leading to a series of revolts by the Pueblans. The Pueblo revolt that started in 1680 was the first led by a Native American group to successfully expel colonists from North America for a considerable number of years. It followed the successful Tiguex War, led by Tiwas against the Coronado Expedition in 1540-41, which temporarily halted Spanish advances in present-day New Mexico. The 17th century's revolt was a direct consequence of growing discontent among the northern pueblos against the abuses by the Spaniards which finally brewed into a large organized uprising against European colonizers. The events that led to the Pueblo Revolt go back at least a decade before the formal uprising began. In the 1670s, severe drought swept the region, which caused both a famine among the Pueblo and increased the frequency of raids by the Apache. Neither Spanish nor Pueblo soldiers were able to prevent the attacks by the Apache raiding parties. The unrest among the Pueblos came to a head in 1675 when Governor Juan Francisco Trevino ordered the arrest of 47 Pueblo medicine men and accused them of practicing sorcery. Four of the medicine men were sentenced to death by hanging. Three of those sentences were carried out, while the fourth prisoner committed suicide. The remaining men were publicly whipped and sentenced to prison. When the news of the killings and public humiliation reached Pueblo leaders, they moved in force to Santa Fe, where the prisoners were held. Because a large number of Spanish soldiers were away fighting the Apache, Governor Trevino was forced to release the prisoners. Among those released was an Okai Omigatewa man named Pope. After being released, Pope took up residence in Taos Pueblo, far from the capital of Santa Fe, and spent the next five years seeking support for a revolt among the 46 Pueblo villages. 
He was able to gain the support of the northern Tiwa, Tewa, Towa, Tano, and Kere-speaking pueblos of the Rio Grande Valley. The Pecos Pueblo, 50 miles east of the Rio Grande, pledged its participation in the revolt, as did the Zuni and Hopi, 120 and 200 miles respectively west of the Rio Grande. At the time, the Spanish population was of about 2,400 colonists, including mixed-blood mestizos and Indian servants and retainers, who were scattered thinly throughout the region. The Puebloans are traditional weavers of cloth and have used textiles, natural fibers, and animal hide in their cloth making. Since woven clothing is laborious and time-consuming, everyday style of dress for working around the villages has been sparer. The men often wore breechcloths. Corn is the most readily recognizable staple food for Pueblo peoples. Although it is possible that different groups may have grown local plants, such as gourds and chenopods at very early dates, the first evidence of maize cultivation in the Southwest dates from about 2100 BCE. Small, fairly undomesticated maize cobs have been found at five different sites in New Mexico and Arizona. Maize reached the present-day Southwest via an unknown route from Mesoamerica, that is, present-day Mexico, and was rapidly adopted by peoples in the region. One theory states that maize cultivation was carried northward from central Mexico by migrating farmers, most likely speakers of a yudo aztecan language. Another theory, more accepted among scholars, is that between 4,300 BCE and 2100 BCE maize was diffused northward from group to group rather than by migrants. There is evidence that maize was initially cultivated in the Southwest during a climatic period when precipitation was relatively high. The various Pueblo communities have different traditions regarding the making and decoration of pottery artifacts. Present-day archaeologists date the use of pottery by Puebloans dating back the early centuries of the Common Era. In native communities of the Southwest's belief system, the archetypal deities appear as visionary beings who bring blessings and receive love. A vast collection of religious stories explore the relationships among people in nature, including plants and animals. Spider grandmother and Kachina spirits figure prominently in some myths. Puebloan peoples in the 16th century believed in Katsina spirits. Katsinas are supernatural beings who are representatives of Pueblo ancestors. They live for half the year in the underworld with the gods and spend the rest of the year with their descendants on Earth. Katsinas have the power to take the form of clouds and bring rain for agricultural fields. They heal disease and also cause disease. Pueblo prayer included substances as well as words. One common prayer material was ground up maize white cornmeal. A man might bless his son or some land or the town by sprinkling a handful of meal as he uttered a blessing. After the 1692 reconquest, the Spanish were prevented from entering one town when they were met by a handful of men who uttered imprecations and cast a single pinch of a sacred substance. The Pueblo peoples used ritual prayer sticks, which were colorfully decorated with beads, fur, and feathers. These prayer sticks, or talking sticks, were similar to those used by other Native American nations. By the 13th century, Puebloans used turkey feather blankets for warmth. Most of the Pueblos hold annual sacred ceremonies, some of which are now open to the public. Religious ceremonies usually feature traditional dances that are held outdoors in the large common areas and courtyards, which are accompanied by singing and drumming. Unlike Kiva ceremonies, traditional dances may be open to non-Puebloans. Traditional dances are considered a form of prayer and strict rules of conduct apply to those who wish to attend one. For example, no clapping or walking across the dance area or between the dancers, singers, or drummers. Traditionally, all outside visitors to a public dance would be offered a meal afterward in a Pueblo home. Because of the numerous outside tourists who have attended these dances in the Pueblos since the late 20th century, such meals are now open to outsiders by personal invitation only. Private sacred ceremonies are conducted inside the kivas, and only tribal members may participate according to specific rules pertaining to each Pueblo's religion. One of the primary goals of Spanish colonists in the 17th century was the desire to bring Christianity to natives in New Spain. Franciscan priests had prepared for a long process of conversion, building churches and missions all around Pueblo country. Pueblo's feast days are a product of that process. Feast days are held on the day sacred to its Roman Catholic patron saint, assigned by Spanish missionaries 
so that each Pueblo's feast day would coincide with one of the people's existing traditional ceremonies. The public observances may also include a Roman Catholic mass and processions on the Pueblo's feast day. Some Pueblos also hold sacred ceremonies around Christmas and at other Christian holidays.